A very old Stuart S50 steam plant. This is part 7. Cleaning up the connecting rod and working on the crosshead guides. First of all the connecting rod and on the end of the connecting rod is a small bolt. But it's not a bolt, it looks like a bolt but it's just a blanking plug. Normally this would be used for an oil way through to the main bearing. But in this case there isn't an oil way and this is just a dummy plug. So I'll put it on one side for the moment while I clean up the connecting rod starting off with a piece of Scotch-Brite. Although the Scotch-Brite removed some of the tarnish, I needed something much more abrasive. More about this later on in the episode. I want to get to the part where I fix this broken bolt that snapped off in the casting. But before I go any further, it's back to the electric toothbrush and the panel wipe to remove some more grime. I'd like to thank the viewer who mentioned, from a health and safety point of view, using panel wipe, which is naphtha or lighter fluid, in close proximity to an electric toothbrush which could generate sparks in the internal motor may be a problem. What sits at a workbench and goes woof? Me, using panel wipe near an electric toothbrush which could generate a spark, but thankfully no thermonuclear explosion occurred. And I suppose this Proxon motor tool generates sparks too, probably more than the electric toothbrush, but thankfully nothing has been ignited. And for the health and safety people out there, the fire triangle is incomplete because apparently I do not have a source of ignition. Now I've cleaned up the top of the crosshead, you can see the sheared off bolt. What I'm about to do is something that needs a bit of practice. As you can see, I'm using a center punch and I'm moving the center punch and tapping it with a hammer in such a way that I end up with a deep center pop exactly in the middle of the broken bolt. If I don't get this right, then there could be a big problem. Over now to the drilling machine, I'm using a tapping size drill for 7BA, and it's going right down the centre of the bolt. If you look at the swarf that's coming off the drill, this is not cast iron swarf, it is steel swarf. And the job was successful. The next thing to do is to re-thread all the holes. Don't forget the holes are the wrong thread, I want them to be 7BA, so I'm going to thread all of them. But I'm being very careful with this one. Mainly because when I was initially re-threading this hole, it felt a little bit strange as I went part of the way down, and I didn't want to break off the tap, so I thought I'll do all the others and then revisit this one. The reason that the tap felt strange was initially it was going down into a hole that was drilled tapping size, because that's where I drilled out the old broken bolt. Then suddenly, after it got through that, it broke into the original thread, which is a Whitworth thread, and it's slightly smaller than the tapping size for 7BA. Mystery solved, I continue to tap the hole all the way to the bottom. Breaking off a tap in a piece of work is seriously bad, and breaking this tap off in this hole would be extremely bad. What could I do about it? Let me think. No, it's definitely not a good idea to break off the tap in a piece of cast iron. Time now to work on the upper crosshead bars, which are not particularly well made and they're not well finished, but as I always mention, I try to do sympathetic restorations, and sometimes it would be quicker just to make new parts, but no, the idea is to keep the patina, or patina, of the original engine to a certain extent. And I think the secret is knowing just how far to take the cleaning process, so that when the engine's finished, apart from the paint job, which of course will be new, the other parts look like they have some age. I use my polishing spindle on this part as well as the sandpaper. It's always a good idea to poke a pin or something similar through the oilways to clear out any of the abrasive if you've been using a polishing spindle. Because the abrasive that you use on a polishing spindle is like a waxy substance and it gets everywhere. In this clip I'm checking the clearance between the two bars to make sure that the crosshead still fits and of course it does. Not the tightest of fits but it should be okay. I wasn't happy with the finish on the connecting rod. I don't want it to look polished. I want it to look like a steel connecting rod on a full-size engine. And full-size engines seem to have a specific, common, universal finish. And by using some fine-grade wet-to-dry sandpaper, you can achieve the same effect on a model. Very shortly, I intend to paint this engine. I'm going to paint it black at the request of the owner. But first of all, I need to remove every trace of any old black paint that would probably react with a new coat of paint. This bit's not much fun, I'm trying to clean up the crank web using some wet dry sandpaper and it's taking ages. 
I'm going to rethink this and use an entirely different method. The best method would be to remove the crankshaft, complete with the crank web, which is only threaded onto the crankshaft, but I've tried that and it's on there very securely. And I feel that I would do so much damage to the parts by taking them off under pressure that I may destroy them. In the next episode, I'll show how I successfully cleaned up this part. Before doing that though, I thought it was a good idea to remove the eccentric rod. And now I can spin the crankshaft complete with the eccentric without any fear of damaging the eccentric rod. If you watch the next episode in this series, you will see how I do the job. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.